Hey, what's happening, folks? Thanks for watching. This is Gerard's Hood of Culture Culture. And if you're a first timer watching the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and check out my other videos because it's all about plants, it's all about love. I try to give a little bit of, or a lot of bit of information on the channel just to give people an insight to keep plants alive. I am big on propagation and more plants. So that's what we're talking about today. More propagation, more plants. Alright, so I don't know if you guys remember a couple weeks ago I was looking for the uh, Cebu Blue Pathos and uh, I got one in the mail eBay, uh, I think it was eBay, now I think, matter of fact, I'm sorry, it was on Facebook yard sale sites, one of the groups um, it was another person in Jersey, she, or he gave me uh, a nice uh, mid-size pothos but since I frequent Lowe's and other plant stores in the area um, I stumbled upon well actually I got a word out for it um, I got a word out for the Sea Boo Boo and Lowe's now there was two of them and um, I think the other one's still there but uh, now I've got a larger Sea Boo Boo thanks to Lowe's I know a lot of other sites are out there, um, garden centers, things like that, but they're clearances and sometimes you, you have to, like, if you're really into the hobby, you have to kind of be able, or if you really like plants or indoor plants, you kind of have to go to the nurseries frequent, <coughs> frequently and you have to kind of ask to see if a store associate or nursery associate can actually tell you when they consistently get their plants maybe it's on every Tuesday maybe other Tuesday but usually they're helpful enough to let you know when they're getting in new plants I don't even know if they have a waiting list or a phone number maybe they should actually if they don't maybe you should tell them to do that that would probably boost their sales when they're getting new plants yes you have to frequently join or visit these uh, nurseries, plant stores, just to see what they got on the regular. Now, um, like I said, Lowe's has this, and I just got this off eBay because I could not find something like this. So I went to the internet, and that's how I got this. But once again, they. I saw this and I said, this is what I'm looking for. This is that instant gratification. This is all nice, which I could have, like I said, this, I could have, I, I definitely could have made this happen, but just the time frame, it just would have took a lot longer. And that's the only thing about plants and even like uh, curb appeal. If you buy cheap plants, not cheap plants, but uh, how should I say, just um, plants under $10, for outdoor plants, they're not going to be as big as like your thirty or fifty dollar plants, and I know it's hard to take that leap. But once again, you're not going to get that instant gratification once you put it in the ground or bring it to your house. Um, I was kind of upset about that. I ain't gonna lie. I was was really, you know, I was I was like, yeah, I, 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 you know, it's uh, it looks nice, but I, I couldn't do anything with the plant I got, so I chopped it up. Um, this is like the last stem. I also have one and another in this other jar. Yeah. Alright, you got one in this other jar that's, you know, it doesn't have a root but it's growing a leaf. But that's what I was working with and I would have probably been working with that for, I would say, maybe six months or more. Just depending on the growth rate. And then you got to calculate the growth rate. But the travel and the journey to bring this to this would have been epic. And I always love a good challenge, um, but for fifteen ninety eight with you know Jersey sales tax, um, I would have shortened my time frame. But I'm still going to stay on the mission. I'm not going to let this this uh, this cutting go. I'm going to keep you know pushing it and growing that out. Um, but see, blue blue pothos. Uh, 
very nice plant. I just, uh, one of those things that I just didn't see. Um, and I also did a video last week about the escargot begonia. I haven't seen that escargot begonia in a couple of years in my area. And they just started, I'm, I'm sure they're, they're, they're growing them, um, but plants, from what I hear, they fade away and they become rare and then they come back. It's almost like the stock market where you know it goes up in a bull market, then it goes down in a bear market or stays flat or whatever, and it's a crash. So that's what happens with plants, I guess, the, on demand. But I'm happy I got this nice sea boo blue, and I'm still happy that I got the uh, escargot begonia. Um, I have one other special. Well, I have a couple. I have a lot of treats for you. And like I said, we're still focusing on the water propagation. Um, let me show you my hybrid angel wing. Now, we got roots on the angel wing already. And it's ready to be potted. And that's what it's all about like once again when i see like the plants are beautiful but when you get when you see the roots and you see everything growing the way it should be um it just feels like christmas i don't know if you other plant people feel that christmas feeling you know but you don't have to wait one time a year you just got this christmas feeling every time you uh you put action and you know what you what you know and what the skill and everything like that for growing more plants but the angel wing begonia is ready to go i have a couple other stems this one here is ready to go has two stems popping out which i like i said i should have did this a while ago this one does not have any and this stem does not have any so i have Two more angeling begonias ready to be potted up if I could find another spot for them without damaging them. And it's also nice, you know, I did get like 500 subscribers. I'm happy about that. Um, everybody, thanks for watching. But it's also nice to keep like a video journal of the progress of the plants from when I got them because I know I got this. In January and it's July right now so the growth rate I can actually clock the growth rate and if you watch my past videos and when I've got the plants you can actually see the growth rate of the plants or if anybody else that you watch that you know maybe has gotten a plant from an online store you can actually see the growth rate of the plant that they've gotten if they you know document it in video like what I'm doing and what other people are doing on YouTube um, so that's enough about the Cebu Blue and the Angel Wing Begonia. The Alocasia bounced back and <coughs> I'm so happy uh, we got more growth and that's even getting longer. Nice, nice piece, nice strong, nice strong leaves. I remember it was getting attacked by mealybugs a couple, um, weeks ago, well not a week, probably two months ago I was getting attacked by mealybugs and I, I, I crushed one of the leaves, this was, I crushed two of the leaves, two of them snapped off, I got it right here, it, it's still going, uh, a friend of mine that's also a subscriber, uh, K, I think K-Love Plant, he, uh, he, he said it might, it might not still survive but uh, it might not grow roots, and it isn't growing roots, as a matter of fact it has mealybugs on it, or uh, aphids on it so we're not even gonna keep this anymore because uh, these aphids are tenacious but just to show them thank god i saw this because i wouldn't have known it these stupid aphids man oh man gotta love it you know it's 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 part of the game the the, the pest but that is still growing and let's check how Keisha how, how Keisha is looking very good no aphids and this is about to unfurl which should be awesome and I'm happy it's bouncing back 
I'm most likely going to have to repot it. And it's also in a container that doesn't have drainage. Um, and probably when I told you a while back that uh, I was going to plant this and I would have to watch it along with the aloe plant that I got uh, or I repotted a couple weeks ago, I'm going to have to watch the watering and just be mindful that I can't overwater it. And those are the, you know, one of the, you know, obstacles you got to deal with when you dealing with uh, plants with no drainage or pots with no drainage. A couple other things I have to show you. My my monkey tail cactus, it's still still what do you guys think? I mean, it, I, I hope I hope it can happen like the thing that happens like somebody's growing this somewhere cuz I do believe that's a root. And I think I'm just going to pot it. I'm going to pot this up now. Or lay it on the ground and pot it. Kind of kind of submerge it. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. But I also see a root growing here at the top. So I'm going to have to... And then, and then I think somebody... <clears throat> or I might have dropped it, but it, it kind of split at this point here. So I'm going to have to figure out what I need to do with it. So if you have any suggestions, because this is a cutting I've got maybe a couple, another couple months, all this year. Everything came this year. Well, most of the plants came this year. Um, so this is a year end, and we have roots, which is great. But now I need the next step and plant and getting this thing in some... I'm, I'm sure fast draining soil because it's a cactus and we're, we're we got another uh, surprise for you um, and I just got to show my appreciation to Lowe's I know a lot of people shop at Lowe's um, I don't promote Lowe's uh, this is not a sponsored page by Lowe's um, but they just come in like if you know if a garden center by your house you know has plants that you want frequently than other plant stores then you kind of got to keep going there because they consistently, you know, you have those hidden gems. Now, one of those hidden gems that I just found was this rare, or not rare, it's it's the Manhula Pothos. Now, the markings on it is what, you, what I'm looking for. And now, basically, this was in Lowe's. Um, it wasn't labeled the Manhula Pothos, it was labeled an exotic plant Pothos. And I noticed that it has some of the solid colored leaves in the pot, along with the Manhula pattern leaves. Um, and I said, you know, that's the Manhula, and I wasn't expecting to see it, but I did, out of the blue, and... Christmas again so <laughs> I mean and I was having a horrible day that that day I was at work and it's just it was just a horrible day and I, I had to go to the plant store I just had to go to Lowe's look at their plants just to kind of calm down and then look what I find um, the man who was sitting you know or hanging it was hanging you know in the uh, you know in the plant store and I, I was like you know that's the man who let me grab that and uh, my day went a little bit better and I was, you know, strengthened and super happy that I got the new manhula. And then actually, which was the funny thing about it, on Facebook yard sale site, uh, I actually was in motion of receiving another manhula. And I was going to trade my Moonshine Sansevieria, which I still am, I want to trade that and just get another manhula. Um, so this is, isn't as bushy as I want it. I want it to climb up just to get the, the leaf pattern to show a little bit more because it, it looks like it's mixed with an emerald or a, uh, emerald queen pothos or whatever you want to call it, those other ones. But this is definitely the man who lived with the marking. But if we can get that on a pole, it'll look real stunning because of the, the, the striking leaves. Now, another thing that I just found out. Now, please fact check me on this one. Uh... The Manhula 
Pathos just came out because of the Florida State University students, whoever they may be. I think I did a video on it. Well, I did do a video, and I'm bringing two, two, I'm bringing two and two together. And I think they actually, and I actually fact checked myself. Uh, they patented this plant. Which is like spectacular. They, they patent the plant, and it's. I wonder how they do it. Or if, I wonder how they did it. How do you how do you patent a plant? Um, and whoever did it, that must be just just the awesome feeling, just to be a part of something that's just going to be forever. Because this is out going. This is going to outgrow their. You know, first of all, they're, they're, it's, it's just going to be forever. It's like say if you actually developed and cultivated a plant and now it's in homes all across the world and you've sparked that change. It's almost like, I don't know, it's just something, you know, just, I can't even explain probably the feeling that they have, but thanks guys for doing what you do. If I am indeed wrong if I've read the wrong information and I read it from multiple sources I don't know who these people are it wasn't it was hard to find who these kids are or who these students were at Florida University but uh, go check it out um, I know they were saying something like they were looking for a pothos that could remove more VOCs and toxins in the air than than, than an average pothos and this may you know, I would say 90% is it. So, if you have, you know, kids with allergies, I mean, allergies, asthma, or, you know, if you think you have harsh air, get a bunch of plants. Because it's not, I mean, plants do remove, you know, the toxins, but it's, you have to get air movement and then you gotta have, you gotta have a ton of plants um, to get really good quality air. Um, so, be mindful about that. If you get the bug and you get a bunch of plants, that's a good thing. Don't worry about it. Um, they are toxic to animals, so we want to keep it away from your, your your animals. So be mindful of that. I just I have fish in the background, so I don't have to worry about anything. Try to bite on my plants and die in, and you know it's it's not what it's about right now. But this is the man who Pathos. Everybody say hey. Another thing is I'm going to show you what I've been doing because now. It's an experiment, and knowing what I know about plants and where they came from, what you need to do to be an actual person, to, you know, just, it, I, I haven't gone through any classes, I, I just have a passion for plants, and I have a bug, I was a passion bug, whatever you want to call it, I have a, I have a will to keep them in my presence, so that's what I do, I, I, I keep them around. And I collect them and I take pictures of them on Instagram and I always tell you guys to watch and watch my progress so I'm actually benefiting from this I'm not getting any money or anything like that but I'm actually benefiting because I can see like the progress when I said I was saying that earlier like you can actually see the progress you can videotape it and then show it to the world so if you're not a youtuber that has plants I suggest you you know get a camera or a phone and get into the the habit of trying to figure out to, to launch a page because it's it's awesome it's a great feeling to see your plants like grow and develop you know they're going to grow <clears throat> but it's good to see where they've come from and watch the progress now what i was saying earlier because i kind of jumped off on a you know went left um now most of the plants that i have they're from either africa asia Africa, Asia, I guess. Some, I don't really, well, I do have some, you know, South American plants. But tropical areas, I'm sure it gets hot most of the time. Um, and then when they're in my house, it's a steady temperature, maybe 72. But it's never hot with that heat, that, that natural heat with the, the rain and the thunder and the airs and the sound that these plants are you know used to in the wild um, along with the fertilizer the dirt everything like that where they've 
you know, come accustomed to or they're native to. Uh, I can try to mimic that as much as I can, but um, one thing that I was leaving out, you know, even though they're indoor plants, I have matured enough for myself and I took my plants outside. I took a lot of them outside and I was doing tests with the most um, plants that I did care about. I wasn't just throwing them out, just doing experimenting. I just was, was definitely going to videotape it and I've monitored the process. So what I did was uh, on the north facing side of my house, I have the uh, Escargot Begonia, the Constellation, um, the Monstera out the outside. I have a couple Pileas outside, Pilea Pups. Um, and the cactuses, the agaves are all outside, and everybody's doing fantastic outside. Um, the growth rate is spurred. I haven't done any fertilizing yet. Uh, once again, if you take your plants out in a thunderstorm when it's raining, the nitrogen in the air combines with the rain, and basically thunder and the rain helps grow your plants. Um, so it's always good to take your plants outside and it's also going to get that humidity and that's what I was also looking for, the heat and the humidity. Um, and I just wanted to see what was going to happen. Now I kind of wanted to keep my alocasia and my hybrid uh, angel wing begonia, I wanted to keep that inside as well, but I know it would definitely benefit from the humidity and the heat but I also this is my first time propagating the escar you know I'm sorry the angel wing begonia so I wanted to see for myself how they would root without any hormones and I didn't do any hormones with it or any rooting compound so you can definitely you know get a glass or some type of container put them in dechlorinated water, cut the roots off, or oh, I'm sorry, cut the nodes, and leave a little space for the roots can, to grow, and in a matter of weeks. Now this, I would say, was two weeks. So probably, you know, judging your, your I don't know how much, how great your humidity is in your house, or what the light is, but in a matter of two weeks, you can have another plant ready to grow. So that's basically it folks, thanks for watching. This is Gerard's Horticulture Culture, and if you like any of these plants, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and keep growing.